Yeah, I think, yeah. Okay, all right, cool. <coughs> all right, I, <coughs> I think we may as well, we may as well start. Right. Because I understand you've got a, a tournament at around 10 past 4, right? So we make sure that everyone can get into the tournament. So what, what I might do is as well start now. And Riff, uh, uh, pleased to see you guys here. Thank you for coming here to this session. Uh, my name is Brian Chow. Thank you. <laughs> so my name is Brian Chow. I work for Adobe as a system engineer. And uh, I, I, my job is really to go out and do product demonstration. I like to say I've got the best job in the world, especially if you like to use computer, use the software, and you got paid right, to, to, do the, to, to just uh, show what you are so interested in. Right? Uh, I don't know, uh, you guys, uh, one day you'll turn up into a workforce as well, and I uh, wish you all the best uh, to find a job that uh, you like, and you can also make money in this, at the same time as well. Okay, all right. Now, I'm just one of those lucky ones. I hope you'll be just as lucky as I am, or if not more. Right? Uh, what I'm going to do is to show you uh, how you could use Flash to build a mobile application. And uh, how many of you have been using Flash? All right, good. Have you been doing action script? Okay, all right. <laughs> Not a lot, right? But uh, if you are starting with, I think, uh, you know, if I look back at Flash, right, if you were with Flash 4, uh, the key theme was uh, animation made easy. With Flash 4, I think animation in Flash was very easy. Uh, who, who are using Flash 4? Sorry? Who are using Flash 4? No? Uh, what about Flash 5? CS5? Right. So with CS5, the theme is we make action script easy. Right. So if you have never done any Flash before, if you are starting now, uh, indeed it's 5.5 .5 now, the latest version. It's uh, animation and, <coughs> and programming both are very easy now. And uh, if we have a bit of time, I want to kind of like show you Flash Builder as well. Uh, Flash Builder, my understanding is that if you are a student, you can sign up for a free copy. Uh, of Flash Builder for education purpose. So, you know, um, sometimes uh, Flash, I was talking about in my early session that uh, Flash and Flash Builder, they complement each other very well. So, you know, uh, uh, I, I will show you a bit of that as well, right? Now, um, and then uh, when we are done, hopefully I've got a little bit of time to show you the future of Flash, uh, what you can expect in the next release of Flash as well, right? And uh, I, uh, again, depends on time, I want to show capability that you can build not just a mobile application, uh, even today you can build a multi-user application as well, where you could have uh, people, one with an iPhone, one with an iPad, and then the other one with an Android tablet, and the other one with a netbook, uh, they can play games together as well. Okay, all right, but let's get started, right? So uh, this is, uh, um, if you've got questions, feel free to interrupt me, ask, right, okay? All right, now, uh, <coughs> as you can see, now the, I've got the latest version of Flash, Flash CS 5.5. If you are using 5, uh, if you have installed our, during CS 5 when we release Flash CS 5, sometime afterwards we have a, kind of like an extension for Flash CS 5, which we make available two more output type. Uh, Air for Android and Air for iOS, right? So those are the new output type that we made available. And uh, with CS 5.5, .5, you don't have to download the extension. It's already part of the package there, right? And these are the extensions that make it very easy for you to build mobile applications. All right, okay. So the, of course, <coughs> you can start from scratch. But if you are new, uh, if you have <coughs> never used Flash, to build a mobile application before, you can also start with our template. Uh, with our template, we've got some mobile templates that you can use straight away, right? So here is uh, one of those templates that allows you to build a mobile application that you could uh, test on. Uh, for example, um, take advantage of the accelerometers of the mobile phones, um, take, a, take advantage of the uh, gesture, you know, with the mobile phone. You know, some of you say that uh, action script could be a bit daunting, difficult. Well, you know what, um, there are facilities, code snippet that ha help you do that, right? Indeed, these are uh, accelerometer and uh, gesture are all done with our pre-built interaction. So you don't really have to do much programming. It's really simply pretty much like drag and drop. All right, okay. So I might just uh, quickly try this one, right? So I might just uh, go and uh, maybe try the accelerometer. Right, click OK. 
And it basically what it does is that it's uh, creating a little flash movie with a movie clip. Right, so uh, many of you would, if you know how to do flash, you, you know exactly what is a movie clip, right? So it's really just a, an object there. Now the interesting thing is that uh, there is some sort of um, uh, action, <coughs> action script in there that is applied to this movie clip. Now those action script is indeed uh, just from, it's already, this is a template, so it's all already built for you, but I'll show you later on that you can actually do it by yourself very quickly, easily as well, using these uh, pre-built interactions there. But what I may want to do is uh, first show you the workflow. Right? Imagine you know how to draw in Flash. Imagine you know how to do animation in Flash. Imagine that uh, you, if you don't know how to code, but at least you know how to drag and drop these pre-built interactions. Right? And um, maybe this is the movie that you come up with. This is a movie with a movie clip that you let people use their phone to, to move the, the movie clip around. Right. How you output to mobile device is very easy. All you need to do is to make sure that instead of outputting to Flash Player, you output to Air for Android or Air for iOS. Right. There's a difference between Flash Player and Air. Anyone know the difference there? Uh, so, the, sorry. Mm, okay, all right. Now, uh, not exactly, not exactly, right? When we talk about Flash, so many of you have, have been using Flash, right? So, in the past, what you do is output to Flash as Flash Player eight, nine, ten, or whatever. What it generates with is a Flash movie that you played inside a browser. Right, so you always played, in the past you played a Flash movie inside a browser, might be as part of a web page, or you're just a Flash website. Right? So anytime when you output as Flash player, is playing at the end of the day, playing inside a browser of the device. Right? Now here there is a bit of problem here. Uh, where is a browser with Flash support? Yes, it support on Mac, it support on PC, it also support on Android phone and uh, BlackBerry tablet as well. But we know that it doesn't support, it doesn't run inside iOS devices. Yes? <coughs> yes, here is a very good point as well. But my point still remains that if your output just as a flash movie, playing inside a browser, it works on pretty much and every device is there except for iOS. Yeah, it's really about a Safari inside iPhone or iPad wouldn't support Flash. Right. So yes? <coughs> yeah, it convert into something else, right? So again the what I'm saying is natively you cannot have Flash or SWF playing inside Safari in iOS devices. Right, so that's the point, right? So this is uh, what Flash Player does, right? What Air, however, on the other hand, it means that it's going to output not as a Flash movie as we know it, it's going to output as an application. Right. When, when it's output as Air for iOS, it's outputting as a native, it actually use Flash to create your content, but it's compiling into an Objective C code. Right? So it's a native iOS application there. If it's Air for Android, it's compiling into a native application that runs on, on Android or, or smart, uh, Android smartphone or Android tablet. Make sense, right? So that's the difference there. Uh, Flash player meaning that it's always played inside a browser. Um, Air means that it's a native application. Right. Now, Air can be Air for Android, Air for iOS, but what about Air, just Air? It means that it's Air for Mac OS X or Air for Windows uh, XP or Vista or Windows 7. Okay, all right, makes sense, huh? Okay, all right, so I'm going to show you that uh, if I want to now output as a native application, I'm not talking about Flash Player, I'm talking about native application. All I need to do is to simply go to Publish and um, it will publish it as an APK file in this case. All right. Now APK oh, sorry, APK file 
means that it's going to be installed as a native application, right? And uh, because it's a mobile application, you could decide whether you want to take advantage of a uh, rotation of the screen, right? Whether it's full screen, whether it's auto orientation, that sort of thing, right? You can <coughs> even specify whether this application is going to call on the, the mobile phone 3G if you want, right? Or uh, whether you want to access the camera, microphone, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, or whether you want to access the geolocation of the phone. Remember, mobile phone these days, many of those have GPS, right? So you could access those information as well. Uh, you could also describe some graphics to represent the icons to represent the applications there. But here, this bit is the, the important bit. Right? When you output as a native application, for someone to install the application, you need to tell them who you are who create the application, right? So on the Android environment, you, s you need to create a certificate. And how do you create a certificate? J basically, just uh, go through this process. Uh, you can make one up your, on your own. Just put in your information there, uh, put in a password, save the certificate into your hard drive, and that's it. Right? Now, you obviously wouldn't do this if you are selling the application. If you are selling the application online to the Google Marketplace, you want to do a real certificate, right? This is really just for testing, right? If you are doing a student project, uh, give it to a teacher. It doesn't really matter. Uh, your uh, teacher knows exactly who you are. If you are going to sell it, someone would want to know exactly who you are, right? Anyway, uh, I've created a certificate on my own. Uh, put in a password as well. And uh, I can also install this application as as soon as it package. Right, so if I click publish, it's going to, like, like what we normally do with the Flash Player where we'll control test movie, it compile into SWF. Now it's going to not just uh, compiling it into SWF, it compile into APK. And because I've got a USB cable that hold up to my phone, right, so I've got an Android phone here, it will also install it on the Android phone as well. So I'm going to test this one. Hopefully you see, yeah, yeah, here it is, right? So I'm going to uh, see that how I move the move the things around. Is that you now? Yeah. Yes. Right. So just like that. Is that easy? Yeah. Right. So the the whole I, I guess the point I want to make this isn't a tutorial, right? So your tutorial we can't do it in thirty minutes. But what I really want to show you is that if you know flash animation. If you know a bit of action script, the only difference is that instead of output to SWF, you output to the native application. Right. Okay, cool. Right. Now, who use uh, instead of Android phone, who use iPhone or iPad? Yeah. Right. So quite a few of you as well, right? So the same application. What do you do? Well, if you want to give it a try, simply go to Air for iOS. Right. Now, Air for iOS again. Then you go through publish setting step. See that what is going to output is not APK, it becomes an IPA file. Oh yeah, thanks. Yeah, forgot about this one. <coughs> so uh, back up a bit uh, back up a bit as well, right? The same file you could simply go and change the publish settings to air for iOS, right? Go to publish and uh, it's going to output as what IPA file. Right. So IPA, if you have downloaded any uh, Apple, uh, any uh, uh, iPhone application before, this is the native file type. Right. Okay. All right. Now go through a similar process. Uh, you can also put in graphics to describe it. Oh, by the way, for I iOS, of course, uh, you can also specify whether you want to target the specifically for uh, iPhone or iPad. Remember, I was talking in an early session about different screen resolution, different DPI. Right, so you bear that in mind as well as you output the contents there. Right, and uh, <coughs> so those are the relevance there. Now, when it comes to deployment, however, this is uh, something that uh, you need to be aware of. In, uh, Apple wouldn't let you just make up a, a certificate on your own. Right, so you cannot do that. What you need to do is that you need to go to iOS developer site, sign up as an iOS developer. All right. How many of you have signed up as iOS developer? Yes. Uh, so how much is the licensing fee for st is something like that, right? 
is there an education student pricing? No, maybe not, right? And yeah, so anyway, it's an annual fee, uh, annual subscription that you need to sign it up with. And once you sign it up, Apple will give you a certificate. Right, so that certificate you can use and then put in the password. Yes? Yes. No, no. You, you need to do everything first. Uh, create, uh, sign it up, pay the fee, then you can download a certificate and put it on your machine. Okay, all right. Now, apart from that, there's one more step that you need to, to know, right? Um, whereas with Android, you just uh, plug in for a USB cable and just uh, test it install it on the machine there. With iOS, what, <coughs> what you need to do is, if you've got an iPhone or iPad, you need to first go and find out the serial number of that uh, iPhone or iPad. Right? Apple would let you support up to 100 serial numbers. And you go to the iOS uh, website, developer website, put in the serial number, and then Apple will generate what they call a provisioning file for you. Right? With that provisioning files then, and you put it in, and then when you click publish, you publish as an IPA file. All right. Now, once you publish as an IPA file, uh, you need to it becomes a digital file. You need to use iTunes to sync it to your device. All right. So basically, that's it. But otherwise, I mean, but that bit is nothing. You know, uh, uh, nothing. Uh, yeah, nothing from us, right? So it's really just the way the workflow is different. But otherwise, the creating of the content, the workflow is the same, right? So you use Flash to create it, you basically change the published settings and that's it. All right, okay. Now, uh, this is all right, but uh, exactly how, how does that work, right? So I presume many of you know how to do Flash animation or, or whatever, so I don't, I don't, I'm not going to show you how to do animations there. But exactly how do we do action script, right? This is where, if you are new to ActionScript, in Flash CS5, we've got something called Code Snippet. Right. This is where, with the Code Snippet, you can drag and drop pre-built interactions. For example, you know, the simple thing like uh, click a button, go to a particular frame, right? So those, if you know how to do ActionScript, fine. If you don't know, drag and drop. Right. So how, how does that work? Uh, very easy, right? So let's just pretend that I'm going to build a new application. Uh, maybe I'm going to build an uh, Android application or iOS application, uh, whatever size that I like, right? <coughs> and I'm going to create a little movie clip, right? So, right, so just like that, right? Uh, make it as a movie clip, right? So um, that's it, right? So we make a movie clip, right? So how do you have interactions such as the rotation of the phone and respond it to accelerometer. If you don't know how to do it, now remember this is a simple movie at the moment, one layer, one object. All right, one layer, one object, right? Now watch really carefully here. I'm going to say I don't really know it. As I said before, in CES 5, we've got this code snippet. With CES 5.5, we include additional code that is specific for mobile, right? So for example, you, if you know how to respond to touch, touch and drag, long touch, that sort of thing, you could, it's all there for you, right? Um, event like um, gesture, like uh, two finger tap, basically two finger tap is uh, hold one and tap the other, uh, pinch and zoom, uh, rotate, rotate is where you use the finger to rotate an object, right? Etc. Uh, Etc. Et Swipe. Right. You could uh, use these preview interactions there. <laughs> the one that I'm interested in, <coughs> excuse me, is uh, accelerometer. Right. So, how do you use it? Uh, well, the code snippet panel actually show you the action script. Right. There's a bit of description telling you exactly what that is. Right. And um, there's the action script there. Now, action script there will tell ask me. Well, you know, which objects do you want to respond to accelerometer? Now, here, this is where it, this is why it doesn't put in any name yet, right? Because I haven't really, I, I need to tell the code uh, what objects should respond to accelerometer. So what I can do is drag and point towards the object that I want to respond, right? So when I click, watch very carefully on the screen, and uh, it will say, well, this object doesn't have a name. 
So ask me to bring a name. Of course, uh, with Flash Action Script, you know that we should give a name to anything, right? So it's going to put in a name for me, and I click OK. And now it's replaced with the name of the object, right? And now I'm going to add this Action Script to the movie. Click Insert. Guess what happened? It's created a new layer called Actions. This is, uh, you know, for many years we've tell people when you build action script, don't put everywhere, anywhere. Put on a separate layer in the timeline. Right? And this is what it does. And it, if, because I've got one layer only, I didn't have a layer called actions, it's created this layer for me. All right, okay. So kind of like telling you what it is. Now if I uh, open this uh, actions panel, And uh, that's what that is, right? So you, as you can see, uh, very simple instruction there with comments. What this action script does is that it allows the object to be moved by tilling the mobile devices there. And then uh, is the action script there, the coordinate, X and Y coordinate is responding to the accelerometer. Multiplied by 30 is really a scale. Uh, the higher the number, that means that it moves faster. Cool? Okay, all right. So this is how that template was made. Template was made. Very straightforward, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. Now, uh, this is good, right? So you know, um, but that's not all. Of course, that's not all there, right? There are a lot more that we could do about uh, flash. Uh, to talk about how do we do re do with flash? Now, I want to you. Know, um, I, uh, when I was in that presentation, I kind of like show you um, a, web, a website called Terry Patton, right? So Terry Patton, I was saying that uh, he's a great developer creating all these games there, uh, <coughs> you know, using Flash. I might as well show you what he did, right? So, uh, of course, he's a very advanced developer there, but uh, at least hopefully he'll show you the, what we could do with that. Oh, by the way, uh, see the untitled one? Oh, you can't really focus. Uh, do, I, can I, do I need to focus? Uh, anyway, anyway uh, that was the application that we test, right? So let me just. Uh, uh, so this is the meter storm that he created uh, with uh, Flash. If I just uh, hit any levels there. So one of those uh, shooting games, I think, right? And this is pretty much uh, where you kind of like uh, pawn, right? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, right? I don't think I need to go through that. Right? If you are interested to see what he's done at his website, got the link. Am I done? <laughs> yeah, don't worry about this, right? Uh, but uh, I guess uh, it just goes to show you that yes, you can use Flash and pretty much the same code base. He has one for Android, one for iOS. Good, okay, all right. Now, the, however, there are more that you could do as well. I want to show you that not only can you create a game that is working on its own, <coughs> oh, yes. If you have, you can even use Flash together with a bit of uh, Flash Media technology to create a multi-user game. All right, so here I am going to show you how a game, particular game here. So this game basically is meant for two two people, right? So two two people there, and uh, I'm going to uh, create the first uh, first. I'm going to output this. To end to my Android, right? So I'm going to publish it, and uh, again put in password. Click publish. Yes. Every time when you publish, you need a uh, put in the certificate. Yes. Sorry. Oh, what does the password do? No, it doesn't do anything. It's really because uh, you create your own password, right? And you put the password, save it into your hard drive. I guess it's just to make sure that if someone have access to your computer, they cannot use your uh, certificate, right? 
Okay, all right. So uh, here we've got this, right? Click OK, and it's done. So if I'm going back to my document window, now you see oh, the, 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 um, the uh, focus isn't too good, right? But uh, you see how the application comes up, right? Now let me just assign it with a name. So uh, just uh, type in any name, right? any name, right, so I'm going to sign in. Now, uh, this application uh, acts as a camera as well. Now, the, just so that you know, at the moment, with, as of today, the flash, the, <coughs> the air for Android support only the rear camera. It, sub it doesn't support the front camera. iOS, iPad, with, not, uh, yeah, I iPad or iPhone with a front camera will support that as well. Right. But for Air for Android at the moment, so no, so yes, uh, uh, so we are not, uh, you can't really see it. So I, I, I have this uh, login as someone, right, and I'll go going back to my computer. Now I'm going to output it one more time. This time my output is maybe Flash Player. Maybe I want to create a game that I could play with someone who might be using mobile phone, someone might be using a browser in a computer, right. So in this case, I'm going to, in I'm going to preview it within a browser. Right. So see that uh, someone has already logged in. Right. So over there on the phone, right, and I might as well log in as well. <coughs> and uh, because in this case it's going to access my camera, right. All right. Okay. So here it is, right. So that's a very simple tic-tac-toe game, right. So if I uh, Put in no. I can't uh, start first because the person with the the mobile phone is logging as player number one. I'm number two, so I might have to <coughs> sorry go back here and uh, kind of like uh, so so that you will see what that is, right? So there are two two guys here. So if I click on this, right, so see uh, how I access this one, right? I'm sorry that I have to toggle back and forth, right? So I uh, go back here. And uh, you see that this this bit is on. You see it? top right. <laughs> so if I click this, right, and then you go back to the phone, right. So but I, it's uh, cumbersome trying to toggle back and forth, right. But I hope you know an idea. You got the idea, right? What it means is that you can use Flash to create a multi-user game that work across platforms. You can even have an Android device talking to an iOS device if you want. Cool? OS 10? Yeah. That's right, yeah. So this is really the point, yes. Right. So how does that communicate, right? So these days there are uh, multiple options there. One is to use the flash media server technology, which is, uh, has been there for a long, long time. Right? So since, uh, for as long as I can remember, we have these of capabilities there. Now the flash media uh, technology, the latest version is uh, version 4, and we've got a new protocol called uh, real-time messaging whatever <laughs> protocol there. I couldn't quite remember the acronym there. But what it does is that it allowed peer-to-peer -peer networking Right. So with the peer-to-peer -peer networking, this is where how you could have multiple objects that talk to each other. Right. Right. Now, if you want to learn more, uh, check out the Adobe website. Go and the easiest place to start with is search for Flash Media Server. Right. Start with something simple. Use the don't even bother with the peer-to-peer -peer protocol first. Just use the same old technique in Flash Media Player, so a Flash Media Server, which is share object, which is what I'm using here. The simplest way to do it, right? But uh, they are <coughs> uh, now it's even more advanced than before. All right. And oh, by the way, uh, do you need to pay anything? No. The Flash Media Server, there's a development edition that is free for everyone to download as well. Cool, right? So you can now start to create these uh, mobile applications there. Now, uh, I think in my slideshow I talk about, you know, well, no, not much time left, so I'm used to, going to use the remaining what, uh, five, six minutes to show you a little bit of the, what would Flash Builder be like, right, if 
um, I want to take advantage of Flash Builder there. Right? So Flash Builder doesn't have a timeline. You can see there's no timeline there, no join tools, but what it does provide are something really nice. Uh, so for example, it lets you build what we call a mobile project. Right. So if I select a mobile project, maybe just give a name, uh, this project. Now, um, you know, Flash Builder always start with project. Right? So it always start with project. Flash, we never enforce that you need to start with project. How so many of you use Flash before? How many of you use a project panel before you build your Flash movie? <laughs> right. Even today, we don't enforce it, but you know what? You gain a lot if you start with a project panel. All right. Especially when you are building a, a, a Flash movie that you want to port across multiple platforms. There, right? Uh, all I can say is that. Next time, give it a try, uh, especially with CS5.5, you gain a lot with using a project panel. Now, Flex Builder always start with the project there, and this is where you specify whether you want it to be Air for <coughs> iOS, uh, Blackberry Playbook, or Android. It comes up with a few templates that you can use straight away, right? So I may just use one of those, right? And, um, and click finished. That's pretty much it, right? <coughs> the reason why it's so good, you know, to be honest, I'm like you. Uh, I started with Flash, so my first, uh, you know, ex um, I guess, experience with Flash is using Flash Professional. So I've never used Flash Builder before, but uh, as I started to play more about Flash Builder, I actually see a lot of potential in this product as well. Right? So here it is. Uh, we've got this uh, application that's based on this template. Why don't I just call this application? This is the title of the application uh, on the title bar. Let's just call this uh, uh, Computer Computer Boot Camp. Right. <coughs> And uh, maybe I'll expand this window a bit as well. Right? So this is really the application, what it looks like. And uh, we are saying what it looks like on an iPad, right? And uh, you can also check out what it looks like on an iOS, uh, iPhone, right? Or BlackBerry Playbook, or Google Nexus, etc., etc. You can see whether, how it looks like on a portrait mode or landscape mode as well, right? So very straightforward, easy, right? Now, I want to show you why is it so good for, um, for using Flash Builder. Uh, sometimes. Uh, remember I was saying that in Flash you put things into absolute position. Right. Now let's just say I want to put in um, maybe a button or maybe a drop down list, a uh, list box, right? So see that uh, Flash Builder comes with all these uh, <coughs> really nice components that you can use, optimized for mobile, right? So and in this case I want to use a list box. I could put a list box there. Like Flash, of course, I could put in as the XY coordinate and width and height as well. So XY coordinate, width and height. But because imagine that this device is good, this list box is going to display on different resolution, right? And um, well, you know, instead of putting the width and height, what I can do is really just uh, ask it to resize based on the screen resolution. I am going to say that it's always, you know, whatever the size of the screen, always maybe zero pixel from the top. Yes. Yes. This is what the constraint is, right? So I could say that it's always <coughs> snap to the left, snap to the right, snap to the bottom, uh, snap to the top. Right. All right. Now, nothing to display at the list box at the moment. Why don't we put something on the list box so that you could display, right? Now, the one thing that is Flash Builder is very nice is that it could talk to a backend database. So why don't we say, I want to display a list of uh, anything onto the list box, right? And just for the sake of demonstration, let me just grab <coughs> some backend data there, right? So I've got, um, oh, it's killing me. Uh, I've got this, um, XML data. So I'm not going to go to a backend sys database. I'm just going to use XML. Are you familiar with XML? Yep. Right. Okay. So there's an XML data there. So yeah. And I've got some photos, images to represent the restaurants. 
All right, okay, cool, right? So what I may do is uh, just uh, go and use this asset into the Flash project, right? And now that I've got the images and the XML data there, right? I'm going to bring in the XML data by going to the data panel and browse the XML data. And now it's going to talk to the XML data. Right? And when you talk to the XML data, it actually generate a, lit, a list of the, uh, the data that is available as well. Right? So it's uh, displaying that there's uh, all the XML data there. If I want to use this XML data, I could simply drag and drop. And, to the, and I want to display the name of the restaurant. Click OK. That's it. Right? So if I want to test it, I'm going to test this. Uh, now, I'm not going to bother to now use the USB cable now. Uh, time's running out. I may just quickly test it locally on my machine, right? So I may say that I want to test it similarly on, say, iOS, uh, maybe based on iPhone, right? iPhone uh, 3GS, right? So click OK, run. And it's going to now output it onto this uh, device, right? Just like that. And I see that there's the list there, uh, response to the touch event, right? And uh, if I rotate the screen, and it resize as well, cool, right? So again, of course, the same thing. If I want to test it on the, on other devices there, if I want to test it on, say, the <coughs> um, uh, Android, I could do exactly the same thing. I could uh, test on Android tablet as well as uh, Zoom or Galaxy if I want to, or I could use the USB cable and test it on this phone. Right. Cool? Okay, all right. So uh, I guess uh, the point I want to make is Flash and Flash Builder both have their places, right? And the beauty is that uh, sometimes you, you can use one or the other. Uh, do you want to save them? I don't know. You can use one or the other, but you can also use both together as well. Because right within Flash Builder, you could put in a Flash component. So if you do it inside Flash, you could save it as a Flash component and then bring it into Flash Builder. And from then on, Flash Builder can even talk to the Flash component as well. Yes. Sorry, say that again. Oh, uh, which one do I use more? I still use Flash a lot more. But uh, as I said before, there are things that are quite unique about Flash Builder that makes it very, very good. Yes? Yes, question? No. Flash, at the moment, Flash Project and Flash Builder project are two separate incompatible projects. So you cannot right, uh, do it in Flash, save it as a Flash project and open it into a Flash Builder from then on. What you, at the moment, at the, the workflow is that you do something in Flash and make it as, a, let's just say this is a movie clip, right? So you've done the, maybe this is a tile game movie clip that you want to use. Uh, what you need to do is to turn it into a component make it as a component and then bring the component inside flash into inside flash yeah. <coughs> yeah yeah that's right yeah now uh, before we go i want to just play a little movie to show you what what can you expect in the next generation of flash right. so here is um, 3d is the last frontier of flash right so this is uh, what is going what we are going to do you see support of 3D inside Flash. Right, so this is uh, done by some of our beta developers. Uh, we are indeed, as of yesterday, we post the public beta of the Flash player, the next generation of Flash player on our website. Right? So some of you are onto the frontier, you can actually give it a try. Right? But those are created using the next generation of Flash. Uh, of Flash Player to create. So you see some of the effects there? Sorry? Yay! 
physics engine. Physics engine, right? So you, you see some of those in, in it as well. Now, uh, I can't really tell much about this because, to be honest, it's so new to me. I didn't have time to go into the 3D stuff there. Uh, there are some 3D APIs that we make available in ActionScript. Yes? <laughs> when is this going to come out? Uh, you know, I, I, I would imagine it would be next year. Right. Because it's never trivial, although the beta has been going on for a long time. Uh, it's only yesterday that we make available as public beta. So those are be those are work that was done by our private beta testers. Yes. So um, this new flash just is, will let you manipulate inside that attack. Yep. Oh. So games, right? So that will be when, right? So that will be uh, possibly six or so. Right? Yeah. Uh, now this is flash, right? Well, how how would that work with other? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, cool, right? So if you are interested, labs.adobe.com. This is where you can find out your work before everyone else know, right? So if you are interested, go to that because uh, as of yesterday, we make available as a public beta, and and in the in the movie you see there's a list where you can see a lot more of the 3D examples as well. Right. So if you guys are onto games and want to do the 3D stuff, well, you know, we've got something ready for you by the time sometime next year. Right. Okay, all right. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Up. Great fun. Thank you. Thank you.